Guys, communication and information are very important in a survival situation. Knowing what's going on around you can be critical, and sometimes technology can fail, and this little radio has multiple ways to charge. Solar, a hand crank, has a rechargeable battery, it has optional AA batteries. You can also hook this up to an AC adapter, and it can charge your phone. There's so many different things. And so we're gonna take a look at the HQ issue from Sportsman's Guide. Uh, this is actually the Cato Voyager radio, but Sportsman's Guide is actually offering this one for less. Now guys, I've handled a lot of these different radios and it's just important to be able to have notifications, you know, with your weather, with emergency situations. Sometimes your power's out. I mean, there are things that can go wrong. And you know, a lot of times little transistor radios like this have fallen out of favor because of just all the technology. But one of the things about technology is that it can fail. And so having backups is really a key to survival. And communication is a key. I mean, whether it's law enforcement, military, all of your first responders, they have a, an excellent communication system, and you need to have the same. So one of the things about this radio is a multi-band radio. It has FM, AM, has two shortwave channels, and then we also have the NOAA weather alert system. This is a really great uh, way to be able to handle a lot of different forms of communication just to see what's going on around you. The speaker is right here, it's large. There's a rubber coating all on the body. Now while this radio has this rubber coating on it, it is not impervious to weather. And so if it gets wet, you need to keep it dried off. I mean, if it gets a little rain on it, you'll be okay, but this is not waterproof. But before we get into a lot of the details, I kind of want to show you some of the things that make this particular radio very appealing to me as a, a prepper or into survival. And one of the big ones is right here, and it's this solar panel. Uh, you can see it kind of comes up from the back, and uh, you can just bring it up and get solar power. So no matter if you don't have any power, uh, you know, the sun is around. Now, and on a rainy day, that can be tough uh, to get that, and it is a very slow charge but it's just continuous. Not only will it charge from the sun directly, but it will also charge the rechargeable batteries that are installed in here, and we'll look at that in a minute. And so you can angle this however you want to. Now, I'll show you here on the back, it actually folds down and closes. So it's right out of the way. You could actually leave it in this direction, facing the sun, and you'd be good to go. Now, of course, deploying this on a sunny day is really the only way you're going to be able to get any kind of charge. And it is a very slow charge with solar. But you can adjust this to get as much sun as possible. And, of course, it moves up and around. Uh, and then you can actually put this handle on it to kind of keep it still. But you're really going to want to put this at some sort of angle to be able to get the maximum amount of sunshine to be able to charge those batteries. And today is not one of those days. It is overcast and rainy. And that's the great thing about having the crank, because you can always use this no matter what. Now, one thing I do want to show you that's built in are their lights right here. And I'm going to show you how that works. Right here on the front, there's a little switch. You click it on once, and that actually turns on these lights. Now, these are really reading lights. It allows you to see. It allows you to be able to read. And you can angle this however you want to. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can use this light. But not only that light, you can click it another time and you have an emergency strobe. And it's in red. And so this would just continue like a beacon and you could leave this sitting. Or one more click and you have a flashlight. Now here's a closer look at the light settings. The first one, of course, is your light. That's a reading light coming out of your solar panel. The next one is your emergency light. And then the next one is your flashlight. But another method for charging is it has a crank right here on the side. And uh, you can crank it and charge that internal rechargeable battery. And really you go for about a minute or two minutes to charge that battery. And the handle fits right down here so it stays really flush with the body. And right here we have our battery port cover and we can just lift it up. We have our rechargeable battery here, but you can also install AA batteries. And so this is gonna give you another bit of capability again in a survival situation you can use regular you know duracell or energizer batteries uh, i always say to keep good solid batteries and honestly over the years duracell has, has been the best for me uh, one thing you will notice though is when you first open this up this little 
connector here for your rechargeable battery will be pulled out. And they recommend that you keep that out typically, unless you're using the radio. And then you just snap it right into place and you're gonna have that rechargeable battery. So there's a lot of redundancy here that I love. And yes, I should have left this strip underneath the battery so I could pull them out easier, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And right here we have a small little rubber boot. We can pull that open and this shows a USB port. You also have a charging port here. You can uh, put in a USB charging cable right here and hook it up to a computer or to an outlet if you have a USB uh, adapter. And then we also have the AC adapter right here. Now one of the things they recommend is that you get the AC adapter that goes to the HQ issue radio. Uh, and you'll get that at Sportsman's Guide. And they also have an earphone port. This would be really important if you need to keep quiet, but you need to be able to listen to what's going on around you. And you can plug those in and listen. Now one thing that I really like uh, is that you have this USB. You can take your regular phone charger plug it in. Right here you have your output on or off. And to, so to charge your phone you need to put this in the on position. And now we're charging our phone. And uh, that's a great battery backup. So this is also not only a weather radio, it's also a battery backup. They recommend taking the hand crank and charging and this helps to charge your phone faster. Now right here on the back you have an antenna. You can just pull this out, especially when you're using the radio it definitely helps. Now the first knob has seven channels for your weather band. Uh, and so what we're going to do is, is turn on our battery. It was 14.5 feet. Minor flood stage is 16. .5. We have one. Minor flooding. And then 25 miles an hour. Here we have the uh, local one for me. Lows around 40. Northwest winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. And this is going to give you the local weather, whatever's going on around you. Southwest winds around 5 miles an hour. Now from weather, we're going to go to FM. And I'm going to go ahead and... There's a really good volume on it. It's coming in clear. I know it's all you've got to just be strong. Staring at a stop sign. Bar is one of the women that won in the people when he regathers them. So we have quite a few different stations we can turn to. Then we have AM. Is it the lowest point in about five decades? Now one thing about AM is that you need to make sure you have a clear line of sight. The better you can get the antenna up to a window or get it outside, the easier it is going to be able to pick up. The stock market was doing so well, and did that indicate it was so well with proof? Then we have shortwave, and we have two different stations, and shortwave is all over the world. And sometimes it can be more difficult to find out what's going on. But you can just tune it, and then you have a second channel as well for shortwave. And it has each one of the bands marked AM, FM, shortwave 1, shortwave 2. So you have a knob here for your battery. You have a knob for your solar, the crank, or your DC power. And then you have a setting for your weather alert. And you can take this, turn it off, put it on weather, and then if there's ever a weather alert, this will come on and it will let you know. They recommend actually plugging this into an outlet. Uh, and then you can just leave it, keep it on the weather alert, and then the, the local station and the channel 7 for me. And then if there's ever any kind of emergency weather alert, this will come on automatically and it will announce it. And so I think that too is a really cool feature because sometimes you're not paying attention, sometimes you're busy, and you don't even realize that bad weather is around. There's also a low battery indicator here, and you also have your charging right here. And so if you've got something charging, it's going to come up uh, and it'll show. And then, of course, when you're on high, the battery will show in green. Of course, right here is where you find your stations, and then you have your volume right here. You also have a little strap at the top, and it has a rubber handle on it. This is going to make it easy to be able to hold on to, and this is somewhat adjustable. Um, and then, of course, you know you have some small feet to keep it level. Um, and really the body, again, is this really nice rubber overmold finish to it. 
and it just helps protect it. It also comes with a small little booklet, and this explains a lot of the details. There are some things where you need to have uh, the controls turned off to charge, and if the hand crank is better to use for certain things, uh, the amperage that's being generated from the hand crank from the solar, and different things like that. And this is a very useful little book, and you need to keep this with it. I actually read through the entire thing, and uh, it was really simple terms, and it just tells you what different things to look for uh, so, you know, it's a very concise little instruction manual. I actually, overall, this is a really nice little weather radio. Now, on the Sportsman's Guide website, I believe these run $44.99. Uh, and then if you're part of their buying club, it's around $40, $40.29, I think, or something like that, or $40.50. So you can go to the Sportsman's Guide website. And in fact, you can go and just put Such in the search or Sensible Prepper. Okay, and a page will show up that has the top 40 items that we, again, either recommend or that we're currently testing. And on the Sportsman's Guide website, you get $20 off a $100 purchase using Such in the coupon code. And that always helps. So guys, there's a lot of options out on the market. I think this is one of the best. In fact, I even looked up the 10 top best weather radios out there. And uh, this one was listed as the Cato Voyager. Uh, but this is the same radio, the HQ issue, and uh, just a great option from Sportsman's Guide. And I want to thank those guys for sending this for the test and evaluation. And we have Noah. All we need is the Ark. And with all the rain we've had, we about need one. <laughs> be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Here is a chart. Okay. Uh, it's just a really cool, very well done fly little. Okay. Just a. Okay. This is really just a cool little deal that you got to get your deal pickle on.